Hey, so, hey, look, thank you guys for showing up. Um, I finally get to meet you, Stephen Barron from Alaska, coming down. Uh, just so you guys know, he's already pre-approved. Um, uh, my name is John Duncan. I'm a realtor. I always go by your local military realtor. Yesterday, I found out the military, um, which I'm very excited because 21 years, I'm done. Uh, I have a company called Upside Property um, by way of Excel. And I have Jose Mudragon over here. He's a buyer specialist and also Bradley Brothers a buyer specialist. And Lisa Capoci, you can identify us by our uh, pretty smiles. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or our red pants, right? So um, I always like to do an icebreaker. Uh, in the military, when I used to instruct, I used to do a little icebreaker, you know. Uh, but I'm going to start off with a joke, all right? So um, you have to guess the joke. You gotta guess it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't give the jokes that I used to give in the military because they're inappropriate. All right. But uh, I'll tell you the joke. So um, my son told me this joke, and uh, whoever gets it, they get a pen. <laughs> a pen. Yes. All right. Y'all ready? All right. What do you call a hippo with one leg? <laughs> No. Oh, oh What'd you say? I said a hopper. She got it. <laughs> she got it right. Did you know that already? No, I swear. You have kids? I didn't. But they're older and they don't even talk to us anymore because they're 18, 16. We're <laughs> roommates. If he's got one leg, he's got a hop. You got a woman with one leg? Everybody say it. Everybody say it. Everybody say, ooh. Come on, participation. Everybody say, ooh. Ah. There you go, ma'am. But uh, nevertheless, uh, thank you all for showing up. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to us. It's our first one of many that we're going to be having. And what we're here for is to educate you guys on home buying. Um, I'm just partnering up with Michael Saxon. Uh, Michael and I have done some business in the past. Uh, and he's also a veteran. So whatever questions you guys may have, um, I know some of you are first time home buyers and whatever questions you guys may have, feel free to, to ask them. So, what? So, like John was saying, you know, we're obviously here to learn about the home buying process. You're going through it right now. Um, and you two are about to start. Um, and, um, so rather than sit here and just spew a bunch of information that y'all might not care about that does not pertain to you or anything else, we want to make it like a town hall, like a, a conversation, as opposed to as opposed to uh, you know, hey, here's all this information, and then you just you know. So whatever questions anybody has, please feel free because I know I know there are questions. I mean, because you know. It's, First time I'm home, right? So, um, what you got? No. So, I'm already a homeowner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about investment property. Okay. Um, and I guess just to kind of know how that works if you're not going to live in the home that you purchase. So, in South Carolina, the, the big thing with investment properties is in South Carolina, um, you charge at a different tax rate. Um, the tax rate is anywhere from three to five times higher than the primary residence tax rate. Um, and uh, but depending on the type of the depending on the type of investment property you're going to buy, whether it's going to be a long term or short term rental, the short term stuff like the Airbnbs, I mean they, I mean that's it gets taken care of. The taxes get taken care of, you know. Um, the other thing, the minimum down payment on an investment property. Uh, first off, we're, it will be if it's an investment property, it will be a conventional loan. Um, so that's the that's the only type that we can do an investment property on. And the minimum down payment on an investment property is going to be fifteen percent. But I strongly recommend if you have the ability to put down twenty five percent because the interest rates just get so much better. Um, at 25% as opposed to 15%, because it's a, it's an investment property, right? And those are those are high risk for the investor, uh, so those are more likely to be to to go into foreclosure to you know whatever else. So they want to incentivize that extra that extra money down, so the investor has 
you know, kind of less skin in the game. Um, but so, what are, what are your plans like? Long term rental, short term rental? Um, I haven't. I've heard that Airbnbs are great to have, um, but at the same time, um, long term potential. Okay. One or two is over time as well. I've had several clients that have done uh, Airbnb properties and they're doing well with them. As long as, you, you know, as long as they're buying the right type of property in the right location right. and, you know, all that, they, uh, they do, they do very well with Airbnb. I have a friend of mine bought a, uh, bought a uh, lake house on Lake Murray not too long ago to do an Airbnb and he's already booked out until through next summer. So it's, I mean, and it's, and it's turnkey. It's Airbnb takes care of everything. They come in and look at, look at what, uh, you know, make sure it meets their qualifications and it's turnkey. So if I'm considering potentially two, would you recommend to do Airbnb first and then potentially maybe long term if it's... So for, for what reason? In purchasing. So for the Airbnb, for the if we if you're going to use that income, it has to be we have to have two years history of it. Okay. Um, to be able to use that income, it has to be under tax return for two years. Okay. Now, there is. Do you have a? Have you ever owned any investment properties? No, I have not. Okay. So I take that back. I did. I had one in Texas. How long did you have? From 2003 to 2018. Okay. So there is a pr program called the DSCR program. That it's debt service debt service coverage ratio, and when they go to appraise the home, as opposed to doing a a normal appraisal, they're going to look at it from a rental standpoint. And as long as the rent will cover the mortgage payment by at least one dollar, so that's the debt service coverage ratio. Uh, the the DSCR on that is one dollar. Um, the coverage ratio is one dollar. So as long as the rent payment covers the mortgage payment by at least one dollar, good. Now, that's a specialty program. Um, have to have at least 12 months of investment property ownership history. Um, and I don't know how current that has to be. That's something, that's something I would have to get an answer for you. Um, now, anytime you hear specialty program, like that's outside of your main four, like conventional USDA, VA, FHA, um, the interest rates on that are low. Yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna be higher for those specialty programs. So, um, but like I said, minimum down payment on investment properties is fifteen percent. Strongly, strongly recommended at twenty five percent if you can do it. That gets you out of the mortgage insurance and that gets you out of the uh, that gets you out of the uh, or it gets you out of the lower rate. Great question. Great question. Great question. I love you guys. Uh, yeah, you can come back to me real quick. Oh, I was actually talking to the salon. Well, I asked this on the phone yesterday. It sounds like we're on main ones, but for those who don't know, I'm as Amy. Can you possibly just kind of give an overview of like the whole process? I love all this, like, from the beginning to end. Sure. So, starting from the beginning, I mean, most of the, most of the time you're going to meet your real estate agent first. Um, right. And then they're going to refer you over to me. And once that happens, we have a, like we did the other night, we have a, a what I call a phone interview. Um, we're asking you some basic questions um, and see if there's anything that we need to, anything that we need to get worked out, anything we need to talk about, um, anything that I need to be on the lookout for when I get your application. Um, so I know how to, so I know how to process your application. Right uh, from there, we I look at the application and assuming it's approved, um, I send your real estate agent the requalification letter, and that's basically your. I call it your ticket to go to look at houses, right? So it's not me and my, are you done? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, so from, from, uh, from that point, you start looking at houses, you make an offer on a house, uh, your, your agent, you know, whoever, um, your agent may be, which, which you're working with, Jose. So Jose and I will talk and I will call the listing agent you know, once you make an offer, um, say, hey, um, this offer is being made, really well qualified buyer, 
blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to, basically trying to sell it to, to make sure that you're offered the one that gets accepted over, over others. And calling that listing agent to get that thing you sent, um, calling the listing agent to get these things accepted has, we've, we've had our offer accepted several times when it wasn't even the highest offer because they heard from the guy that's doing the financing and basically like got that reassurance like hey we're, we're fine we're good to go the solid file all that um so all right, can I a Thank you. <laughs> all right so you know what covered a lot right but then once once you're pre-approved like you said he gives you that gold ticket of that pre-approval that gives you leverage right to, to help find the property um and just to talk if you get pre-approved like um three hundred fifty thousand dollars doesn't mean that you have to go that high we will you just tell Jose or you tell the, the realtor how much you want to spend, right? The conversation that you will have with Mike, you say, I want to keep my payments at this pay, this price point. So then that's a conversation you have with Mike, and he will tell, all right, well, you need to be in this price range, and that's a continuous conversation with the, between the realtor and the lender and yourself. Um, once we find you a house and Mike calls and we get it, let's say we got the deal, right? So the next step is now we're ratified. We're going to ratify a contract. Um, in, in the state of South Carolina, we have a 10 day due diligence period. And then that 10 day due diligence period is business days, not including holidays like we have Christmas coming up, right? So within those 10 days, that's where we're, we're having inspections done on the property, um, uh, surveys if it needs to be. Um, and we want to get everything done within that week. So on a Monday, we get a ratified contract. By Wednesday, we want to have inspections, an inspector coming out. and, and on the inspection, it's a general inspection that we do at first, right? And then from that inspection, from the general inspector, he might, he's gonna be looking at the roof, the HVAC system, plumbing, and if he finds something in within those, and he says that, hey, this needs to be looked at, then we hire another inspector, an HVAC inspector, a plumber, an electrician. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna inspect those items because they're certified and licensed. From there, we will have a uh, inspection report on top on top of the other inspections that we have for the specialties of the HVAC system and so on and so forth. Oh, so there's like a general inspection in, in the roof, HVAC, and plumbing, a special inspection? So if needed, if needed, if needed. yeah, okay. if needed. Um, if they're not needed, then we're not going to have it. What the what you're going to do then is once you get the inspection report back, simultaneous year, we're just going to get it back. Jose, and myself, or Lisa will give you a call and say, hey, listen, do you have the inspection? Do you have the inspection? Great, we're gonna look at the inspection report together. And we're gonna go through line for line of, uh, you're gonna have to state your concerns and what you wanna have fixed or repaired or replaced. And then your, your realtor's gonna say, we really gotta get this done, right? The HVAC is important. Um, and they're gonna put that on what we call a repair addendum. And on that repair addendum, it's gonna state what we wanna have fixed and we're gonna attach the other inspections from the HVAC inspection plumbing, if we need to it, we're going to pass it off to the um, listing agent, and that listing agent is going to take it, and we're going to say this is what we want to have fixed, repaired, or replaced. Um, and this market, being that it's a buyer's market now, more than likely they're going to fix it because they want to sell the house, right? They want it, they want to get it sold. Um, any event that they do not fix it, then we have to go back to the negotiating table and say, are you? Can you? A lot of times people have their um, uh, that's the strap. <laughs> Everybody else hearing that too, right? They're filming the bubble on the Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, the only one. But I know I'm saying a mouthful, but um, it's important. Like, we definitely want to make sure that everything's thorough. Once all that's done and the seller, seller is saying that, yep, we're going to fix all this, boom. We want to see proof that it's fixed. We go back out, have a reinspection. Once that's done, Michael, talk about the appraisal. Yeah. So the appraisal. Do you, do you, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, David. I have another question about it. No, I want you to ask a question. Can you talk about it with the bell? Like, it's like, no, 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 no. I don't live like that much in the house. So, I actually, we found a house, we got really lucky, it fell out of a federal contract, and I called John on Monday, on Monday, he came with his in contract. We were going to 
down. So I probably drove John crazy as well. We're no, you we said you did not. And about six months later, he said, how do you feel about real estate? And I said, you know, I've been really thinking about it. So uh, Michael refinanced my house too. He called me when the rates went down again. He was like, hey, you know, we're refinancing. It's not the property. Let's do this and it's really possible. Speaking about the payment, we went to my payment. And here I am at a 2.75 inch. 2.75 interest rate. So that's why I know these two goobers. They're stuck with me for like forever. That's just how the Italians do it. But once you're in the family, you're in the family, right? So he kind of walked me through it. I didn't know anything about real estate. I didn't know anything about the process of buying a home. I didn't know anything about it. I also didn't know anything about being a realtor. So enter two and a half years ago when I bought my real estate, like again, then Helen was my <laughs> What's up again? But now that we do have this experience, we're here to fight for you. You become part of our family when you buy a house. So like a, you know, a rightful sister that's gonna fight for you every step of the way. This last one that we had, we were so happy it closed because working with Navy Federal, <laughs> they're great for naming. I guess. So if I may, if I may, um, you see the energy with, with Lisa. Um, believe it or not, he has energy too. Um, <laughs> but the, the earnest money, just look at it as being a deposit, right? Look at it as being a deposit, showing that buyer and that seller that you're serious about purchasing the property. And most of the time, you'll get that earnest money back, especially if you tie and we get all closing costs, you'll get that money back at closing. Um, now, if it's a case by case basis, like Lisa said, in her special case, she didn't put any earnest money in, which is amazing. That just tells you where we are in the market. Uh, but just be prepared uh, to show good faith of putting some money in. And so that's, a, that's an excellent question. Uh, but now, as opposed to, just want to tweak something John said, as, as opposed to getting the earnest money back in closing, it, it goes toward your closing costs. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you're if the total closing costs are you know four thousand dollars and you put in on a thousand dollars earnest money now you bring in three thousand um, dollars and that's assuming we don't have any seller pay closing costs if we have seller if we have three thousand dollars for seller pay closing costs then that that reduces that number. Well, it's so everything uh, in real estate is good. Everything. Everything. So if you don't like something, tell your real estate agent. John makes you upset, and makes you mad. Tell him, hey, you made me mad by saying this. He doesn't know, but we don't tell him. And then again, same with us. If there's something that we ever say or do that makes us upset, like you can't really prepare for that. Cool. We'll take care of that. That's great. Another thing is, is um, everything's negotiable. So if you go in a house, and I literally, yeah. uh, for, uh, <laughs> my mother bought a house to me, um, and you know, it was pretty special. But she wanted the patio wow. furniture because it had a pool. That's a that's an excellent question. So in the state of South Carolina, right, what we use the word convey, right? What conveys? You have real property. No, no, no. I just like three times. Again, I got lost. So, yeah. so like yeah, sorry. I used my VA loan on my first property in California. I sold that house, purchased another one, so it was like I had a brand new VA loan to use for that house. Uh, the funding fee and all the stuff behind the financial stuff may change here and there a little bit. Then I sold that house in California, I bought out here in Lexington, and I got to use my video again. So it's kind of like a recyclable benefit. You still have different funding fees that go along with it, but it's not like a conventional one where you have to have a percentage down. The VA is 100% funded for that price of that house. So you still have to you know, come out of pocket for closing costs sometimes. Um, it just all depends. That's where your realtor comes in. Yeah. And you can use you can use your VA loan as many times as you would like, just not concurrently, right? Because VA won't loan on a, on a second loan. Yeah. Um, so. so the max entitlement is thousand. Yeah, and that to be honest, that's really not even a number that. You ever find a house I mean. Well, living house thirty six thousand. No, 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 no. no. Oh, so it's, that, that's not even that's not even a number that's ever really even discussed. Like we don't even really talk. So I see the thir the thirty six thousand dollars is just for me, basically. Um, I guess so I have. Sorry, I don't. You have to do one on one for me. So the pool department, you know, I, I've already explained it. I'm sorry, but like, what does that relate to the rest of the Is that basically how much entitlement you have to use 
it, they use that number to see how what percentage. They use that number to see basically if you have three six zero votes in the top one, then they're going to see basically how much housing versus your salary and all that. Um, it's a random number that the VA. No, no, it's a random number that the VA puts. So, like, if he opened up my file and I said I only have fifteen thousand dollars for the VA benefit, I'm not going to get disqualified for as higher of an amount. So, if I have my whole entire benefit, like I sold my house, that VA loan is closed out, it's already been paid back, my whole benefit is restored. That thirty-six thousand dollars is just a random number that the VA likes to use because we all know how government bureaucracy works. And some first lieutenant in the cubicle is like, "Sounds great, put that number on there." That's basically what it means. That that's something that we don't even have to worry about. This this guy. Just got yeah, there. it's a number that if I would have never said it, you would have never. If I would have never brought it up just a minute ago, you would have never heard it. It would have never been a discussion. Okay. Um, so it's. But is, is it really going to stick? I just, the times I'm like, okay, I know we touched upon that, but always ask the question. Don't feel like you are out in the field saying, well, I don't know what a CLM is going to ask us. We're happy to tell you. We're happy to explain it. Come to the inspection if you want to. You can follow the inspector around. <laughs> it's, it's boring, but at least you'll know. You know, it's not, it's not required at all. But um, if you're like me, I'd like to know what's going on with my property. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. It does. This was very fun to work with. <laughs> so let me just expose you on the CL100, all right? The VA is set up to, for, to protect us as, as members, right? And if there's something that's going on with that CL100, it has to be cleaned. So if there is moisture or wood fungus or whatever, it needs to be fixed prior to um, uh, us closing, or or they won't accept it. Just like when you have the appraisal, if it's subject, it's a thing called subject to. If the house comes back appraised, but it's subject to something having to be fixed. Because the appraisers with the VA is just like an inspection. They, I had a client that bought a house and the deck had uh, rotted wood. So they were like, the house appraises, but it's subject to the seller fixing this uh, deck. And so they got it fixed. I took photos of it. Actually, the appraiser came back out. He didn't believe my photos. He came back out and he was like, okay, it's good to go. I'm getting cleared. And so, um, the lender gets it, they, they'll let you know if we're good to go. And if we're not, we go back and we're negotiating. And the lower asks them to reduce the price of the house to the appraised value. Um, so, how many of you guys have anxiety about buying a home? Just be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, so listen, look, um, let me show you guys a promise. I, I was talking to you about it. I was 21 years old and I bought a fourplex. The only reason why I bought that fourplex is because I was going to go out and buy a Mustang because that's the thing in the military paid 21 years old or a motorcycle. I got injured in Iraq. I came back. I had $8,000 in the bank and I thought I was rich. I mean, where I came from, I didn't have, I never seen $1,000 in the bank. I looked, I said, I'm rich. I'm probably going to buy me a mansion or something. I don't know. I'm going to buy me a bed in the Rolls Royce. Whatever. Um, my aunt, she said to me, hey, you want to buy a fourplex or a house? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you can use your VA. And I'm like, what's that? You know, had no clue. Well, 21 years ago, or well, however it was. Let's go back up to early, right? Um, however, we we are being told the people that are much smarter than me are, and the people that I subscribe to and get my information from are telling us that interest rates are going to be going back down in the spring, right? Close to the end of the spring. They said, they said end of March, April, May, somewhere around in there, we should see rates back down in the fours, right? So when that happens, there's something called a VA Earl, okay? VA and what? Earl. Earl. And so it's I-R-R-R-I, -R 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 -I, three R's and an L.